The Light Sport and Ultra Light Flyer would like to thank BRS Parachutes for providing air transportation to and from Aero. We would also like to thank ICP North America for supplying our accommodations at the show and Renegade Light Sport aircraft for transportation and meals during the show. We're here at Aero, the grand show for light aircraft in Europe, thanks to BRS Parachutes for financial assistance to produce these videos. Speaking with Tom Beginney today, he's the man behind an aircraft, well, a lot like this that I flew many years ago. It was called Flight Star then. It's called E-Spider now, and Tom's going to help us go through the changes on this aircraft. It looks a lot different than what I remember back in the 80s, I think that was, Tom. Tell us, a, give us a little, a little bit of the background about the uh, E-Spider as we know it today, and then you can discuss some of the details and safety features of this aircraft. Well, the basic configuration and the basic design is in fact the same as the Flight Star that my company produced and I've supported over the biggest percentage of my lifetime. Uh, unique international, bought the rights, the tooling, and the design of the, uh, what was then the Flight Star range of aircraft. And now they're making the E Spider, which is a electric, we would call it an ultralight in the United States, but this is a certified aircraft in uh, Europe. It's just been certified to the DOLV standard and has an actual certificate of airworthiness, which I believe is the first electric certified airplane in the world. Is that right? Cool. I didn't know you yeah. you had won the DOLV approval. Yes, that's okay. the, uh, Excellent. the certificate is overhanging on the wall. It's powered by a 27 kilowatt motor, which is roughly the equivalent of uh, 34 horsepower. It has uh, two 70-pound uh, batteries. It has a duration of uh, one hour, up to one hour, with uh, enough uh, reserve electricity for doing a go-around at the end of uh, one hour or an extra 20 minutes of flight. In addition, they've done some other changes to make it easier to fly. They have a longer fuselage, and we have also extended the wings with a sheared wingtip, similar to uh, an air cam, if you will, for this type of construction, to improve the glide ratio. And, uh, and then the longer, longer fuselage, the longer boom tube, uh, makes it easier to fly. All these things make it uh, uh, get more util utility out of electric power, Tom? Well, the longer, longer span and higher lift airfoil does allow it to fly with less power, less energy. Less, less power required out of the right. Okay. Towards duration. And then also having the uh, very low drag, quite beautiful electric motor up in front uh, this has the best glide ratio of any flight star ever because it's much, much aerodynamically much cleaner. Than and this motor system uh, has several things involved with it that are really smart. It has a, if you're starting to overheat the motor or the controller or the battery, it'll start dialing back the power to really. keep you from doing that. Uh, it also goes to a self-diagnostic setup when you start it. And uh, you hear some tones that are, it's checking the batteries, it's checking the, okay. checking the motor, and it's checking the controller. And then before you're allowed to add, uh, add throttle, well, the power <laughs> lever to it. Uh, it's got to have new terms. It's, here, they're yeah. not horses and they're not, not engines, so you have to have a new term. It's not really a throttle. Uh, the pillar goes, jumps back and forth so that you have some warning. And Mr. Tian Yu, the owner of Unique, uh, really believes in electric flight. He's not doing this because he wants to dominate the electric aircraft field. He feels that this is some technology that must be developed for the betterment of pilots worldwide. And he's really pursuing it. He will not stop until we have successfully created, commercially available, ready to fly electric and uh, they make their electric motors for all of their planes. They, they make this complete power system. In fact, everything is made You're on this aircraft. making all of this stuff up here? Absolutely. Wow. It's all made in-house. They do not source out anything. Uh, all of these parts are made in-house. Uh, it, it is very similar to the Flight Star in that it has a chrome Wally gauge. It has uh, 7075 aluminum wing spars that are made especially for unique in China for that application. Uh, the wing covering, by the way, is made by an old hang gliding company that you're familiar with, it's made by Wills. Oh, Will Wilson, Wilson, still making the wings for this. just celebrated their 40th year being in business, and we're really proud to continue to give them business with the great people. They do a great job on this. So how far along before somebody could actually have one of these of their own? 
Well, actually, they will they'll be ready to sell in Europe almost immediately and because they are certified to the German Dulf standard and that is applicable around a lot of the United States. But uh, at Aero Friedrichshafen 2013 was the final vote by the ASTM F-37 committee that will allow the, integ the integration of electric propulsion systems into light sport aircraft in the United States. It's going to have to go through the notice of availability vetting process with the FAA and there will have to be some other changes, perhaps an exemption with the FAA, but we think it will go well and we will soon see these being sold in the United States as a SLSA and an ELSA. Well, that's very exciting. The ASTM I know, uh, my work on it as well, not in that group as much, but with the committee, they've been working on this electric propulsion set of standards for several years now, I think three or four years perhaps. Uh, and. Uh, it's an all-new field, so there were a lot of opinions one way or the other. How should we do that? That's very exciting. But it is an exciting time, and uh, we're not suggesting this is the be-all, end-all of electric flight forever, but it is the most exciting thing that it is bringing brand new technology involved, the regulation that will allow it to be used, and to develop the technology of electric flight for people like us. And Here's an aircraft that maybe in a year or so, or maybe less, somebody could buy, fly, enjoy, charge up, go fly some more. Right. In the United States. Uh, do we have a, these videos stay on YouTube for a long time, we don't want exact numbers, but do we have a range of price that one of these might cost? Uh, it should be somewhere around $40,000, including a ballistic parachute, ready to fly, batteries. Not a kit, ready to fly. Right, that's our understanding at this point. That's a, you know, an estimate at this time. Sure, understood. And uh, these things are something to change over time anyway. But that's very exciting. That's a lot of information. We'd uh, like to know where we can go on the web to get even more details about Unique and the eSpider project. Do you have something for us like that, Tom? UniqueInternational.com. UniqueInternational.com, great. Right? I'll have inter information and already do have some on the eSpider that's available on ByDanJohnson.com or BYDanJohnson.com. Thanks a lot for joining us here at Arrow. Thank you.